I'm Starborn. Remember, to be a star, you have to shine your own light, follow your own path, and not be afraid of the darkness, because that's when stars shine brightest. Today, uh, if you've been looking at our website, starborninstitute.org, you'd already know that the title of tonight's show is Change is in the Air, and it really is. We have a lot to look forward to. And that is because the planets are building up now in the creative conceptual air signs. And in fact, there are three in Gemini, and they are trining two more in Aquarius. And all five of those in air signs are trining another third air sign, Libra. So today we have the Sun and uh, Venus and Jupiter all closely conjuncting each other, which doubles their strength, in Gemini. Gemini is the traditional ruler of the third house of everyday life and your pals and your buddies and your neighborhood and your early childhood education and it rules youth and it rules easy transitional change. And so that's what we can be looking forward to because those are three wonderful planets, the Sun, Venus, and Jupiter, all conjuncting. And then they are to be trined beautifully by the Moon today and by Pluto in Aquarius, which is the sign of the future. And so the Sun and the Moon are trining each other, and Pluto is also trining uh, not only the Sun in Gemini, but Venus and Jupiter as well, which is rather nice. In fact, Jupiter is at one degree of Gemini, Pluto's at two degrees of Aquarius. That's pretty exact. <laughs> and together, all five of them are trining the sign of Libra. And Libra rules peace and partnership and compromise and negotiation and it rules beauty and art and being tactful <laughs> and rather charming. Libras are charming people. And it also rules the law and all legal contracts. So those things are favored. And so that's we have to keep that in mind that even though Libra is empty, it's being beautifully tried by five great planets. And the reason why we have to keep that in mind is because there's going to be a powerful solar eclipse in the Libra in October coming up. And I think that the changes that are in the air right now could be leading up to even better partnerships in the fall or better legal contracts then, which would be great. So what could be the outcome of these five planets in air signs that are also favorably trining each other. Well, there could be a lot of results right now. And remember, change is in the air. It doesn't mean that changes are complete, but it does mean they're sort of heading in different directions now, which is great, which can promote change. And Gemini rules short trips and short courses or short methods of education. It rules two-year colleges and it rules uh, vocational schools, things where you can pick up a, the skill in a job pretty quickly and then get that job. And so um, <clears throat> this is a time when there can be an emphasis on short travels or um, moving to a different neighborhood because Gemini rules neighborhoods or getting together with young people who may be graduating from schools and uh, looking for summer jobs or trying internships right now or going to camp or, or doing projects of their own. And so all of that can be going on, and there can be a lot of people who may want to take short courses in the summertime, and that would be a change for them because they could take an exercise class or a sports class, or they could take some sort of class that could help them brush up on their skills, which would be great. And then there is always the possibility of better partnerships or new partnerships, and there can also be support from people in upper management management for new projects, even if they're just part-time projects. There could be a lot of support from people in upper management who have their minds on future plans. And that's because Pluto rules people in um, positions of authority or in upper management, and it is in Aquarius, the sign of the future. But those planets, the Moon and Pluto in Aquarius, are trining the planets in Gemini and the sign of Libra as well. So those are good changes that can be in the air right now for a lot of different people. Or maybe you're just thinking about moving right now. But you could be moving to somewhere that was rather familiar to you in one way or another. 
But at the same time, oh, oh <laughs> there are also five planets that are immutable signs and they are squaring each other. There are another four planets in fixed signs and they are also squaring each other. And so we have to watch out for that too because that could represent different kinds of changes. And in fact, today that same Sun, Venus, and Jupiter in Gemini are all being squared by Saturn and Neptune in Pisces, another mutable sign. And Gemini and Pisces are both double-bodied mutable signs, so there can be a lot of things going on. And some of them would be behind the scenes, and because that's what Pisces rules. So there can be some people under this harsh square of five planets and mutable signs that can be rather unhappy with things that are going on behind the scenes. And remember, even though there are five planets just in two mutable signs, those five planets are also squaring and opposing the other two mutable signs, Virgo and Sagittarius. So those are empty signs, but they're being affected by this R square. And then there are um, four planets in the fixed signs still. And that is because um, Mercury and Uranus are in Taurus, fixed financial sign, and they are being strongly squared by Pluto and that moon in Aquarius, which is the sign of the future. So there can be a bit of a conflict, maybe even a financial conflict going on somewhere between people who want to get future plans underway and other people who just want to keep their hands on the money or do things the same old way. And so there could be a conflict there. But basically there can be uh, some people behind the scenes that are rather unhappy about uh, the way things are going. Maybe they're not going their way anymore and they can be unhappy about that. Or maybe there can be things that are suddenly discovered behind the scenes and that can create tension as well. And so who would win in this, this sort of a, a power struggle behind the scenes that can be quietly raging in the background anyway? Well, I think that who will win <laughs> in that eventually are people who really do want to move into the future. Because it's the five planets and air signs all trining each other, leading up to the new moon in Gemini next week when there will be six planets and air signs trining each other, and they'll all be trining the sign of Libra. So new partnerships can be on the horizon. Uh, maybe you're going through some sort of change or considering some sort of change that would result in a new partnership. Whether it was part-time or full-time, it still would be new. <laughs> or some sort of compromise or some sort of contract. And that would be just great because that would be a precursor. The change that's going on right now and what is represented by the new moon in Gemini next week, those changes uh, represent uh, the preliminary steps to be taken uh, toward a very good partnership or a very good legal contract that can be coming up under the solar eclipse in Libra in October. See, so maybe you're just making small changes right now and maybe over the summer that's what you're thinking of doing or maybe you're making moves or whatever uh, but you could be in a prime spot for a great partnership by October and uh, it could happen anytime now because there's such a heavy trine in the air signs all to the sign of Libra. So uh, I think that people are, who are fighting, making petty fights behind the scenes, uh, they ought to sort of quit and go home because that's not where the action is. <laughs> the action's in the air signs. Okay, what does this mean to all 12 of the sun signs? Hmm, Aries. Well, Aries, there are planets that are in successive signs and they are coming to the last degrees in their signs which means they're all about to change. They move at different speeds though, so they're not all changing at the same time, but it's going to happen. And one of them is, is that Neptune is in Pisces, right behind your sun sign, and it is at the 29th degree of fate. So, and Saturn is there as well. And Saturn's gonna stay a little longer, but Neptune will be moving forward, and it will be getting ready to leave and come into your sign. And Neptune in Pisces, which it rules, means something completely different when Neptune would come into your sign because yours is a fire sign. 
you know, real act of sign. And Neptune rules sort of nebulous things, but it also rules dreams. So you could be on the verge of a dream coming true, except for the fact that Mars has been in your sign, but it's now at 28 degrees. It too is getting ready to leave. And when it leaves your sign, I hope you've got your plans in place. While, you know, I hope you've been working real hard on some new idea or new direction to go in while Mars has been in your sign Aries, because it is your ruler. I mean, gee, and uh, we had a full moon in Sagittarius trining it, and we had a solar eclipse in your sign. <laughs> And so, you know, there's really no excuse, Aries. You really should be getting uh, on towards something new right now. And I would really concentrate on that because Mars won't be in your sign too much longer. Remember, it's only at the 28th degree now, and it's heading on out. And then ahead of that is that um, Uranus is in late degrees of Taurus, but it's a very slow mover. And so it's going to stay in Taurus for another year, but always near the end of Taurus, which is subruled by Saturn, the planet that rules Capricorn. So money may not be as easy to come by unless you do everything right and follow every single step, because that Saturn is called the Taskmaster, and it's going to be in a money sign, or not Saturn, but Uranus. It's not called the Taskmaster, but it is a planet of sudden surprising change, and it's going to be in Taurus for another year. And so Neptune is going to be moving into your sign, Mars is going to be leaving your sign, and Uranus is going to be sort of sticking around right in front of your sign for a while. You see, in the, there's going to be change, I said change is in the air, in these three signs, Pisces, Aries, and Taurus. There already has been in Taurus. Um, there are a lot fewer planets in Taurus now. They're moving on into Gemini, except for Uranus. So that is why you've got to concentrate even harder, Aries, on getting something new underway while your ruler is still in your sign, because it will certainly give you a lot of energy. And so I hope, I hope you don't put anything off. I hope you even work a little bit harder about starting something new, Aries, because after all, you just had a solar eclipse in your sign. It was a great one. And you're meant to succeed at a new start. So I hope you don't delay. Uh, it could be that you're running out of time and you've sort of got to get things put together and move forward right now. So good luck. Okay, what does it mean to a Taurus? Well, Taurus. Remember, I, I told Larry, saying planets are moving out of Taurus right now. And that's true. And actually, three great ones have moved. And it is the Sun and Venus, your ruler, Taurus, and Jupiter, and they are all in early degrees of Gemini right now, all conjuncting each other, but they're in Gemini, not in your sign anymore. And so, uh, Taurus, you don't have quite the strength in your sign that you used to have, and on top of that, there are two planets squaring your sun sign. Remember I said there are four planets in fixed signs. Well, um, Mercury and Uranus are in your sign, and they're being squared uh, by the Moon and Pluto in Aquarius. And so there can be somebody in a sort of a high position that's got their mind on future plans, and um, those plans could be subject to change, and therefore you, uh, you may not um, be too confident that you can count on the backing of uh, people who are maybe heading in new directions right now. And I think you would be right about that. And so I think you need, since there are no other planets in the um, Earth signs, to back your sign up. And um, by next week, even Mercury is going to leave your sign. So you'll have Uranus, but that'll be it. And it'll be squared by that Pluto in Aquarius. Pluto will be squaring your sign, and it'll be opposing Leo, and it will be squaring Scorpio for the next 17 to 20 years. And you know... Uh, because it's in Aquarius, and Aquarius is a fixed sign, and so is yours, and Leo, and Scorpio. And you know that's going to represent roadblocks uh, to people who don't like change. None of the fixed signs like change. And so, Taurus, um, if I were you, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't rock my boat right now. Uh, whatever you're used to doing, I think you should just stay there and keep doing it. Uh, because you're going to be facing a power a square from 
powerful people who've got their minds on the future. And if you, you know, Taurus is a fixed sign, so it's pretty convinced that it's right. And if you decide to come up against somebody else who is in a position of power and con is convinced that they are right too, but you are not looking at the future and they are, then you're going to get left behind. Now this could be wonderful for you, Taurus. It wouldn't be bad at all. And even though it's a square, it means you may not be taking a flyer on something, but that isn't a Taurus nature anyway. Every earth sign likes to have their feet on the ground. Same with Virgo, same with Capricorn. Earth signs like to have their feet on the ground. And I advise you to stay there. If you've already got your feet on the ground, Taurus, stay there. And the reason why is that um, the, the times when Pluto was in Capricorn, continually trining your sun for years, you know, for most of this century, Pluto was in Capricorn, always trining your sun and the Virgo sun. And so big government and big business kept growing and growing and growing and growing. And you may have thought that that kind of support was going to last forever and it's over. And, um, and that's why I think you need to regroup or you need to retrench in one way or another. And actually, it could do your world a good, Taurus, because, as I said, you don't like to have your boat rocked anyway. And so you just need to sort of dig in and, and keep doing what you're doing. And um, that's the road to prosperity for a Taurus. Uh, a Taurus is a good hard worker. They have confidence in themselves. Well, I don't think you need to go beyond that, Taurus. Just keep focusing on what you've done in the past and stick with it. You know, um, I would not change horses in midstream, Taurus. You would regret it. This would be a better idea. It would be a better idea for the long run for you to sort of stay on your own road. And uh, whoever's got ideas about the future, uh, let them go and take their own flyers. Um, risk is not what a Taurus likes. So um, you've built up some good things in your life, Taurus. Uh, don't forsake them. In fact, work harder at them. Just stay where you are. Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, that way you will build, be building a shield around you that can protect you from the changes and the challenges that will be facing you uh, for the next 17 to 20 years when Pluto moves up to Aquarius and continually squares your sun. And so that's why you need to hunker down. Okay, what does it mean to a Gemini? Well, Gemini, this is a time, Gemini, when you can sort of be scratching your head and saying, hmm, I wonder what's coming next, because something's definitely headed your way, Gemini, and in fact, your sign rules two of everything, and it also rules part-time or temporary work of any kind, and you're very versatile and adaptable, and, um, you, you know, you're pretty charming. Um, your sign rules communication, and it rules the public. And uh, Gemini should always be out in the public. It's where they shine, and they do well. Uh, Geminis react very well to other people. Uh, that's sort of a uh, talent of theirs. Uh, they're born with it, which is great. And then they just de naturally develop this talent of being able to deal with the public rather successfully. And uh, you're going to have a real good year <laughs> this year, Gemini, because yes, the Sun is conjuncting Venus, and Venus is conjuncting Jupiter already in your sign. And then Mercury, your own ruler, is moving in, and then the Moon is going to move in. So the next new Moon is in your sign with five planets there, all being trined by Pluto in Aquarius. And all six of those planets will be trining the sign of Libra. So something that you're going to be doing this summer, Gemini, and it could be coming up a little sooner than you think, uh, but something that you're going to be involved in, or possibly two things that you're going to be involved in, could be um, changing and growing to the point where a very good partnership is formed in the fall when the Libra eclipse hits in October. It could be formed now, but that's, that's the way it's headed some very good partnership. And um, 
that could be just one partnership but your sign rules two of everything so there could be another contract or another opportunity for you to do something or just some sort of expansion while well, Jupiter is in your sign which it just entered it's going to be there for a year now Gemini and Jupiter is the planet of expansion and benevolence and goodness so your life is going to expand and I would say if that involves a family member their lives could expand and therefore yours would too so there could be that going on. <laughs> so uh, Gemini, um, this is not the time to think that you can sit back in your rocking chair for a year. That is not going to happen, Gemini. <laughs> you're you're going to have to, you know, take your vitamins, <laughs> get in shape. Because <laughs> you're going to be busy in the next year, but I think you're going to be loving it, so good luck. Okay, what does it mean to a Cancer? Well, Cancer. This is a time Cancer. When you could be feeling as if things are changing, and because that's the title of the show, Changes in the Air, but some of it could be behind the scenes, and it could be for the better. <laughs> and that is because you have such good planets behind your sun sign, Cancer. Lucky you, the sun is conjuncting Venus and Jupiter in Gemini right behind your sun sign. So there's something very harmonious going on in the background of your life, Cancer. And if you're saying, well, gee, I don't think so, well, look again, Cancer, because there should be somebody around that's thinking very well of you. <laughs> or you could be thinking well of them. And that is because Venus rules partnership and Jupiter is conjuncting it. And so there could be the opportunity for a very harmonious partnership uh, somewhat behind the scenes right now. Maybe it's just in the early formation stage. Uh, maybe it's just, you know, changing. And maybe there has to be some changes before it can blossom fully. Uh, but something very nice is happening in the background of your life, Cancer. And um, I would say that it is, uh, it could even be two things. Um, it could involve some sort of a move. But it could also involve short travels. That's what Gemini rules. It could involve dealing with young people in one way or another. It could be something where you're changing neighborhoods, because uh, Gemini rules neighborhoods. It could also be that you want to take a refresher course, or you want to begin to prepare for some sort of more serious partnership or contract that could come anytime. I mean, that. Those good planets are sort of working pretty hard right behind your sun sign, Cancer, and that would be to your delight. It, it would make you happy. And uh, it's going to get even better next week because the new moon in Gemini right behind your sun sign is going to have five planets there. A lot going on in the background of your life, Cancer. And I would say for the good, definitely for the good. And uh, it certainly would involve someone else. And um, that could either be the consummation of a partnership or a subs it could just be a short work project that you're working on or a short trip that you're going to take. Or it could be that you're beginning to develop um, a way to make a precious dream come true at the very last minute. And that could actually work out real well behind the scenes. So good luck, Cancer. Um, Mars is at 28 degrees of Aries. It has been squaring your sun. Uh, it, has been, it has been indicating that not all relationships have been working out, that some of them are troublesome, and there could be somebody who's been wanting to sort of punch your buttons and make your life miserable. Uh, but I think when Mars leaves, which it's about to do, and since it's only at the 28th degree and there's only two more degrees to go, it's on its way out of Aries. And when it does, maybe some trouble that you have been undergoing that has been very nerve-wracking for you will fade away as well. And, and so I, I certainly hope so. But the only two planets that are actually trining your sun right now, Cancer, are Saturn and Neptune at the 29th degree in Pisces. And remember, they are two planets that are squaring the three in Gemini because that makes five planets immutable signs uh, squaring each other. And so, uh, not everyone's going to be happy with what's going on behind the scenes right now, Cancer. But I urge you not to let that stop you. Um, you know, try to stay away from trouble. But I would concentrate on something that is uh, 
almost a blessing that can be taking shape and can be worked into, you know, if you keep going on something that's real important to you behind the scenes, you're going to be able to make that grow and uh, keep it growing. And um, I, can't, I can't describe how you're going to do it, but I know that the new moon next week is really going to help you out too because there will be more planets there. And at the same time, Mars will be moving out of this harsh square to your sun sign. So whoever's been irritating you for a long time, I think, is probably going to move on. And uh, that could give you a big sigh of relief, so good luck. Okay, what does it mean to a Leo? Well, Leo, you know, Leo, um, this is a time, Leo, when there still are four planets in fixed signs, and they are squaring each other. Well, they're all squaring or opposing your sun sign, Leo, and the Scorpio sun. And that is because Mercury is still in Taurus, along with Uranus, and they are squaring your sun sign, Leo. And then there are another two planets, the Moon and Pluto today in Aquarius, and they are opposing your sun sign. And so, Leo, there can be a financial problem that um, is what I would say is a little bit tricky right now in one way or another. And it can be because there can be people that they know what they want, and it's like they're, they have tunnel vision. They can't see anything except what they want. And so, you know, it's a little hard to, to negotiate with people like that. First of all, they don't listen to anybody else's ideas. They just stay focused on what they want. And um, it would involve money, because the planets in Taurus are squaring your sun. But it would also involve a question of power. And... Um, I would say you are not going to get all the money that you thought you were going to get, Leo, at least not at this time. And uh, it may be due to circumstances beyond anybody's control. It could be the way the markets are fluctuating right now, or it could be that the value of your investments are going up and down. But at the same time, there can be um, um, a separation of power, or what I would think is that there are people that are really thinking a whole lot about their plans for the future and that will not include you. And um, you shouldn't mind that at all, Leo, because, Leo, Mars in Aries is still trining your sun. And that's good. That means you can still get a new beginning off the ground. And the important thing about that new beginning, which you should sort of like not take your eyes off that, Leo, is that you would be in control of it. See, Leo's like control. Control is their middle name. And if you are looking at something that isn't fully developed yet, but it looks like you could be in control of it, you ought to run, not walk toward it, Leo, and just go for it. Uh, because I don't see anything stopping you. You know, Mars and Aries it won't be in Aries for much longer. But it's there now, and it has been, and you should just sort of keep your eyes on the prize and go forward with something new. I'd work a little harder at that, Leo, because it doesn't have to be about money right now. Uh, it has to be about your plans and, and how you manage your time and how many people you can get to help you or how you're setting up your schedules. Okay, then when you've got all that set up, you can worry about whether your budget's big enough or not. And it doesn't even matter if your budget isn't as big as you thought it should be. As long as you've got some money to make a new start, you should, you should run and not walk and get going on it, Leo. Because uh, Mars is the only planet in a fire sign. But it's trining your sun. Still, uh, you almost have to make up for lost time. So if you have been arguing with anybody about money, I would stop it. Stop the argument. Because it's draining your energy. It isn't getting you anywhere. And you're not in control of that. So he, you're, you're losing a little stature just arguing about things. Instead, you can go in a new direction and be, be the boss. Be your own boss. And so you need to... Don't, don't take your eyes off the prize, Leo. Uh, it's, it's your ticket to freedom. And you need to keep going on that. Uh, and uh, you won't be sorry. You know, Leo's control is so important to a Leo, it's almost more control, more important than money. Leo's really like to be the boss. And so 
go for something where you can be the boss. That makes sense, doesn't it? Change is in the air. You can get out of a confrontational situation and into a brand new situation that's peaceful and nice, or at least is that you're in control of. Who wouldn't want that? So good luck. Okay, what does it mean to a Virgo? Well, Virgo. This is a time, Virgo, when I think you're going to have to be a little bit careful, sort of watch where you walk right now. And, you know, you, there could be times or there could be relationships that you're in right now where you sort of have to walk on eggshells and mind what you say and maybe just don't say what you're thinking right now, Virgo. And the reason why is that there are five planets in the mutable signs squaring each other and they're all squaring or opposing your sign. Okay? And there's not as much support in the earth signs as you have been enjoying for quite a long time. But they're moving out of Taurus. And there are no planets since Capricorn now. And there's only two in Taurus, a Mercury and Uranus. And Mercury's leaving. Uh, and so you, you have to be a little bit careful what you say and who you say it to right now, Virgo, because the Sun, Venus, and Jupiter are in Gemini, which means people want to make changes now. And I, I hope instead of arguing with them that you help them make changes. You know, if, if it makes them happy, well, why not? And, um, you know, it might mean that somebody wants to do something that isn't completely logical, and maybe they can't afford the whole thing, but they want to do it anyway. You know, maybe it's somebody that just graduated, or they just started one job, and now they want to start another. Uh, why don't you just help them, Virgo? Uh, because the Gemini planets are going to continue to be very strong, and they're going to continue to square your sun. And so you have got to figure out a way to get along more easily, particularly with young people. And, uh, and, and with the public. And so that would be good for you. Uh, it, it might be challenging, but um, why don't you just think that, well, you know, a person doesn't have to win all the time. They just, you, you know, Virgos like to be right about things and they check the facts real closely. They generally are right about a lot of things. You may not need to let the world know that at the moment, Virgo. <laughs> Instead, just keep working away, doing your best, and uh, try to keep a low profile because not only are the three planets in Gemini squaring your sun and there's going to be more next week, but the big problem is that Saturn and Neptune, which is at the 29th degree of fate in Pisces, are both opposing your sun sign. And there is a matter from the past or there is what you might call some unfinished business. That would be Saturn and Pisces opposing your sun uh, that you need to clear up or work on. There could even be a health problem of yours that you have chosen to ignore for a long, long time. And I would suggest that you face it now and uh, do something about it. Um, because you could have been kidding yourself for a long, long time. Neptune is capable, particularly in Pisces, uh, it, it rules omissions and deceptions. And it would rule people who were kidding themselves about something. And there could be a health condition that's been hanging on for a long time that you have refused to address. But possibly you should be doing that now, Virgo. Uh, because that Neptune is up at the 29th degree now. So I, if you're going to do anything, look inwardly and just say, Hmm, what, what, how could I make myself better? You know, how could I improve? Well, Virgos like improvement. Virgos, Virgos think they're never perfect, but actually Virgos work so hard and they're so careful with things that they're very good at what they do and uh, very reliable. Uh, Virgo rules being of assistance to others. They're always there. They're always the last person to leave a project because they, they'll finish it. Virgo rules finishing. It's just if you've had a problem you've been refusing to face, then you've never, you've never finished the solution to it, have you? And now's the time when you've got to finish that instead. So good luck. Okay, what does it mean to a Libra? Hmm, Libra, lucky you. You have five planets trining your sun right now, and there's going to be more next week. And that will, since this 
this, um, the way the plants are building up in air science indicate that changes in the air, it simply means that certainly what's happening to you, Libra, there's going to be change. It's not just in the air, it's going to come your way. <laughs> and um, it could result in um, a choice of opportunities that you can make of different things that you want to do. You would have a choice. There would be at least two different things that you'd like to do. Well, if you were thinking of doing each one part-time, you could do both of them. Uh, that's fine. Uh, because the planets, the next new moon is in Gemini, and that does rule part-time or temporary work or, or any kind of effort. And so you could work a little bit on one thing, then you could work a little bit on another. You would be making new friends, probably, and some of these friends could turn out to be more serious partners of yours, Libra, by this fall when there is a solar eclipse in your sign. And so uh, this, right now, the buildup in the air signs is strongly favoring your sign. And so a Libra can be seen at their best now. And also, Libra, there are probably more people that regard you well or highly than you realize. You know, people, people don't generally come up and make a big thing out of how much they like somebody. But I would say that you're more popular than you realize and that um, people hold you in higher esteem now, particularly someone who is in upper management who has their eye on future projects and they're probably looking at your talent or your skills and how they can fit in to a future project or goal of theirs because Pluto's going to be training your son for years and so you can get some pretty good partnership offers or they, they might just be work offers or temporary um, assignment offers um, you ought to listen to them all we, the world has never seen Pluto in Aquarius before. But I would say, Libra, it's going to knock the socks off the air signs. <laughs> it's going to be real good for Aquarius, Gemini, and your sign. And so, um, if I was you, uh, Libra, uh, I'd like to whisper in your ear and uh, tell you that you're going to be under such good aspects, well, particularly right now, and as we go forward and with the solar eclipse in your sign this fall that um, I'm going to urge you not to settle for second best not this year because you could get the best this year or if you're saying oh I'm not qualified for something okay well then brush up on something because uh, somebody else with this Pluto and Aquarius trining your sign continually except for a couple of months later on but it'll be back in Aquarius. Um, uh, there's somebody higher up that uh, thinks that you do qualify for something. Uh, they probably have been looking your talent over a little bit more closely than you realize, Libra, and they like what they see. And so, um, don't settle for second best. This year, mm -mm. do your best, and you'll get the best. Why not? So, good luck. Okay, what does it mean to a Scorpio? Well, Scorpio. This is a time, Scorpio, when we remember there still are four planets in the fixed signs. Not as many as there used to be, thank heavens. <laughs> but they are all squaring your sign because the moon today and Pluto, your own ruler, are in Aquarius squaring your sign. And then Mercury and Uranus in Taurus are opposing your sun sign. And Mercury is a planet of communication. Uranus is a planet of sudden surprising change. They're in a fixed financial sign, and yours is the only other fixed financial sign. So there can be some questions about money, or there can be uh, financial extremes going on. And they may not actually be happening to you, but they could be happening to some of the investments that you own. And, uh, you know, things could be going up and down. Or there can be government changes in the laws that can affect your taxes because your sign rules taxes. So you have to be real careful what you're doing right now, Scorpio. And that is because there can be challenging financial situations that uh, since the planets in Taurus are opposing your sun sign. So they may not be your financial problems, but they could be somebody else that wants to dump their financial problems 
on your lap or on your shoulders or borrow money from you or something like that. I would stay away from that, Scorpio. Uh, this is a time when pe everybody should be hanging on to what they've got. And so that's what you should do. And then um, because the planets in Taurus are opposing your sun, there's a financial dilemma that's got to be sort of worked out. If you've done your best to work it out and you know you've done your best, then that's it. Somebody else will just have to live with it. I mean, because if you've done everything you can, um, Scorpios are excellent money managers, uh, but nobody controls everything. <laughs> So if you've done your best, then that's just going to be it. And I hope someone else understands that. Uh, if they don't, too bad. Uh, because uh, the financial markets are a little bit volatile right now, while Uranus is coming up near to the end of Taurus and opposing your sun sign. So you have to be careful with your own money. And then Pluto and um, the moon today are squaring your sun. And that simply means that somebody in a position of a power doesn't really quite see things the way you do about future plans. And uh, maybe they can't afford future plans. Or maybe they think that you are not worthy of their future plans or whatever. If I were you, I would uh, sort of shut down a little bit right now, Scorpio. And... Um, Instead, concentrate on what you have going for you. And, that, and what you have going for you is that Saturn and Neptune, both of which are direct, are in Pisces, and they are still trining your sun, which can give you a lot of support and strong backing behind the scenes. And also, since Neptune is at the 29th degree of fate, uh, you just got about two minutes left, <laughs> Scorpio, for you to make a precious dream come true. The clock is really ticking because that Neptune has no more room to move. And it's been in Pisces for 12 years. It is leaving. Um, it, it's going to retrograde a little bit, very little, and then phew, uh, by March it's gone. And it won't be back to Pisces in our lifetimes, not for any of us. So, uh, at the very last minute, you could still make a dream come true. I would concentrate on that, Scorpio. And the reason why is that the energy of the planets in Pisces are very favorable to your sun sign. They're training it. Whereas the other things that are squaring or opposing your sun sign, they just re represent roadblocks. And you can either spend your life batting your head against a wall and just getting a headache, or you might really try to go for something you've been dreaming about or thinking of for a very long time and it looks like you still have just about uh, two seconds left <laughs> to make a dream come true. I'd work on that instead, Scorpio. Um, you can't be everywhere at once. So do something that you've got your heart set on. And it doesn't have to have anything to do with money. It has a lot to do with happiness and fulfillment. And you owe yourself that. Scorpio is the sign of discipline. Uh, they almost sometimes work harder than they should. And they don't stop. Uh, they're very disciplined. They'll, they'll do something even if they're sick. Uh, they'll do something if they're wounded. They, they just keep going. You know, it rules war. Whoever took a vacation in the middle of a war, nobody. And Scorpio doesn't do that either. And so, you know, you, you've been working pretty hard, Scorpio. Try to make a dream come true. Something that will bring you lasting happiness. And it's a dream that you've had in your heart for a long time that I think you pretty much know that it's right for you. So don't put it off. You owe yourself that. Okay, what does it mean to a Sagittarian? Well, Sagittarius, this is a time with Mars still in Aries, training your sun, but it's at 28 degrees, it's not going to stay in Aries, it's moving on. When I hope, Sagittarius, that you understand there is change in the air, and it's going to become even more pronounced by next week's new moon in Gemini. So today, 
There are five planets in the mutable signs, and yours is a mutable sign, and they're all squaring each other. Well, they're also squaring and opposing your sign, Sagittarius. So the Sun, Venus, and Jupiter, you couldn't ask for better planets than that, are in Gemini opposing your Sun sign. Somebody younger wants to go their own way. Or somebody who's got an idea that they want to take on an extra project, they want to go do that. They could still do whatever they're else, else they're doing and add something new to their life. Or maybe they want to take a short vacation or a short trip. You may not see eye to eye with them on their plans, um, but I wouldn't resist too hard um, because the strength is building up in Gemini. It's not building up in your sign. And so um, you, could, you could tell somebody no for a while uh, and after a while, they would just stop listening to you and they would still do what they want. So why don't you sort of be a supporter and um, guide them. And um, you don't have to endorse everything they want, but it would be better for you if you became an ally, not an opponent. Uh, and even though these, these uh, two signs oppose each other. Uh, because the strength is not in the fire signs. The only planet in a fire sign is Mars and Aries, and it's leaving. So try to be friends, even with people that you don't agree with right now, Sagittarius, because I think it's safer for you. It's a, it's a more cautious way to get through life right now. And there is change in the air, and nobody's in control of all the change, uh, particularly least of all you because there's three planets in Gemini now. Next week there will be five. They'll all be opposing your sun. And Saturn and Neptune and Pisces are squaring your sun. So they're going to stay the same way. And there will be five planets in Gemini next week. There will be seven planets squaring your sun by next week, by the new moon in Gemini. So I don't think this is a time, uh, Sagittarius, when you can afford to make enemies. Or yeah, I don't think you can afford to keep saying no on something. Uh, be, just try to be a little bit more flexible or agreeable. Or if you're wanting to do something and somebody's coming along and saying, well, first you have to do this, and then you have to do that, and then maybe we'll think about it. Unfortunately, I think you better listen to them, Sagittarius. Do something somebody else's way right now. Because I think it's about the only way you can get what you want. So why not do it? Because at the end of the road, you'll be getting what you want. But they're just going to get what they want first. But in the end, you'll still get what you want, Sagittarius. You just need to play ball with somebody else a lot more agreeably right now. And I don't see how you can succeed if you don't do that. So I, I hope that you, if somebody says, oh, well, we've got these things you've got to do first, do them. <laughs> Even if you hate doing them, do them, Sagittarius, because that'll get you to where you want to go. And that's what you really want. Okay? You try it somebody else's way first. Okay, what does it mean to a Capricorn? Mm, Capricorn. This is a time, Capricorn, when yes, there is change in the air. And the reason why is that there are not as many planets reinforcing the Earth signs right now as there have been for years. Pluto is no longer in your sign. It's in Aquarius. It's still favorable. It's right ahead of your sun sign. So is the moon today. Uh, and then ahead of them are Saturn and Neptune in Pisces. Saturn is your own ruler, and they're sextiling your sun too, Capricorn. But there isn't the big heavy weight in the Earth signs that there have been for a long time. And so even in Taurus, uh, there are not as many planets trining your sun, but there are two, and they are Mercury and Uranus. Uranus is a planet of volatility and sudden surprising change, and so it represents instability, okay? So you can't count on it all the time because it represents rebellion and freedom as well. And so a little hard to nail that Uranus down. It doesn't like that. It likes to go do, and want, do what it wants to do. And uh, it's erratic. And that's why they call it a malefic planet, because it can get you in trouble sometimes. Well, it's in a financial sign right now. It's still trining your sun, Capricorn. But that means you have to be very careful with your investments right now. The value of them could be fluctuating. Uranus rules fluctuation and change. Change is in the air anyway. 
And so Mercury is also in Taurus right now. You could be getting some word uh, about financial news right about now, Capricorn. And even if it was good news, it would not be what I would call complete news. In other words, somebody could say, well, yes, there's this amount of money, uh, but, but, but no more. Or, yes, you can get these terms, but not more. In other words, there can be some sort of a news about uh, money or financial assets, uh, but it isn't a completely clear picture right now. And um, so, you know, I think that you should, you should try to sort of batten down the hatches right now, Capricorn. There's nothing in Virgo. There's only two planets in Taurus, and there's nothing in your sign. And so you, you should sort of try to hold steady right now, Capricorn. And uh, Capricorns are good at that. So this is not a time when you may have to do too much, Capricorn. But you've got to sort of sit, stay steady and just keep on going. One foot in front of the other. You are actually excellent at that. Uh, and Capricorns are very security prone. So I wouldn't take a gamble on anything right now, Capricorn. Uh, but you don't need to rock your own boat. What you need to do is watch out for other ways or other conditions in the world, particularly economic conditions, that might rock your boat. And what you need to do is protect yourself against that, if you can. And so that you could steadily work on. And I would say just be cautious. This, this would not be a good time for you to be spending a lot of money. And the reason why is that you wouldn't be too sure of the value of what you were spending the money on. Economic conditions are a little more shaky than people want to admit. And therefore, you know, you might be opening yourself up to somebody who's lying a little bit about something. And that's why I think you should just keep your hands on, on your own stuff and not, not be spending too much right now, Capricorn. Um, just watch what you're doing and just keep that up uh, until economic times settle. And uh, I don't think that they're necessarily going to be very settled for a while. Uh, so if I were you, I'd just batten down the hatches and, and keep going one foot in front of the other because you're good at that. Okay, what does it mean to an Aquarian? Well, Aquarius. This is a time, Aquarius, when I would say, yes, you are coming into your own. And the reason why is that Pluto is already in your sign where it's going to be for years. But it is being joined by the moon today in your sign. And those two planets in your sun sign are trining the sun itself and Venus and Jupiter in Gemini. And together those five planets are trining the sign of Libra. Aquarius, this is a very good time for you to be doing your own thinking, particularly about the future. And uh, I, I think that, you know, you could get some wise advice uh, from people uh, about your future plans. I don't necessarily mean financial advice because the planets in Taurus are squaring your sun. What I mean is you could get some good advice about how to make some changes and they might be part-time changes or just easy transitional changes. Or maybe you would be thinking about changing your neighborhood or uh, changing where you live or uh, something like that, but it would be familiar. It would be familiar to you. It wouldn't be anything real strange. And if you, you know, the show is titled Changes in the Air, and you're going to benefit from that, Aquarius. Uh, if you doubt my word, just wait till October, because uh, you would be able to sign quite a nice contract or form a wonderful partnership. You could do that right now, Aquarius with all those planets, because Venus rules that. She, it rules partnership and the law and legal contracts, and it's in Gemini trining your sun, and Pluto and the moon in your sign. So you could sign a contract or form a very harmonious partnership anytime between now and October. And I just want to say, if you haven't done it by October, okay, that's when you'll do it. It's still coming, Aquarius. And it may be something that you've been sort of had in the back of your mind for a while. It might have been something that, you know, you've been, maybe you've just been wishing for it. Hoping something new would happen. Or hoping you'd meet some new people. Or hoping you could go in a different direction. 
Uh, well, I, I think somebody's going to hear the calling <laughs> or, or understand what your wishes are, Aquarius, uh, because the next new moon, which is in Gemini, is greatly going to favor your sun as well. And so I think that you're moving into the future. The only question is, how big a step do you want to take? Are you going to take a baby step right now? And then another baby step a little later? Fine, if that's what you want to do. Or is somebody else going to come along and say, hey, let's jump into this? You could do that too. You wouldn't be hurt by that, Aquarius. And I don't think that you'd have to be fully committed to something that would take up all of your time. I think you're going to be able to manage your time really well and still take on a new partner or more responsibility or some sort of a fortunate move that you could make. You're really coming into your own, Aquarius. And since your sign rules the future, maybe even you don't have the answer to what you're going to be doing in your future. But I guarantee it's knocking on your door. And uh, you're going to have a real good year. Jupiter's going to be trining, it, well it is right now, it's in Gemini, it's going to be trining your sun for a whole year. Lucky you. So keep your eyes and ears open, Aquarius, to something that sounds appealing. And I would say the only thing you have to do is say yes. Say yes and do it. You'll love it. Okay, what does it mean to a Pisces? Well, Pisces. This is a time, Pisces, when it's sort of a now or never time because Neptune, your very own ruler, which is at home in your sign, is at the 29th degree of fate, which means it has no more room to move. And Saturn is in your sign as well, and it too is direct. Saturn is a little bit more in the middle of your sign, <clears throat> which means you can be in the middle of coming home, actually, uh, to some sort of truth about something you've always wanted to do or someone you've always wanted to be with or a dream that you you've always thought oh gee I love I would love to do this but I don't think I can make any money at it oh you know I so, so I, I won't do it now and you might have been saying that to yourself for years Pisces when actually maybe now is the time particularly if it involves uh, a dream that that include someone else and it could have been a dream that you've had for years years and years and years long before Saturn came into your sign you know Neptune actually has been in your sign for 12 years you've had that dream that long at least and now uh, it, it's sort of now or never either you make it come true or it just slips away and it's uh, strictly in your hands Pisces no excuses you, you've got to make your move and it doesn't mean a hint, it doesn't mean something nebulous, you know, that you're good at. You're good at, Pisces rules photography, uh, it, it rules dance, you're creative, uh, but, you know, what I'm talking about is commitment, Pisces. There's an old saying, a dream isn't real until you make it come true. So if you've had a dream for a long time, the question is, how real is it to you? Are you just going to dream it away into oblivion and never have it come true? Or are you deciding to make it come true? And believe me, uh, you got about two seconds left, Pisces. When Neptune leaves, and so does your dream, you know. Neptune doesn't work in Aries the way it works in its own sign. If you want to read more about your ruler, you should. But only read whatever they're saying Neptune is good at or well known. In other words, don't read, any, don't read anything about the downside of Neptune. And the reason why is you don't have to. When a ruler is in their own sign, they always act for the best. It's just uh, maybe you haven't taken the time yet to act for the best dream that you've ever had. And now's it really the time, Pisces. And you know, yours is a double-bodied sign. So there's somebody else involved in that dream, and they've been waiting for you to make it come true, too. They've probably had the dream as long or longer than you.
but it's either going to be on or over, depending on what you do about it. It's your ruler that's leaving. So don't let your dream leave with it, Pisces. Do something about that now. Good luck. And if you say, oh, it doesn't make sense, or it's not the right time, or I've got other things planned, who are you kidding? You're, you're just kidding yourself. Does that mean you never wanted the dream? And that's why you're thinking of all these excuses about why you're not going to make it come true? Well, then you've been wasting a lot of your own time and kidding yourself. And that's what's really over, Pisces. Any kidding that you've been doing about yourself or the way you live or who your friends are, that's over. And now what you're able to look at is just the truth. And you've got to take a deep breath and say, okay, this is it. This is what I, this is what I live for. This is what I love. Or this is who I love. And it's got to happen. Or not. And if you let it go, it's gone. And that's your happiness goes with it, Pisces. That's why you shouldn't let it go. I mean you're in you're in for a, a lot of happiness if you make it come true. So good luck. Alright, thanks for tuning in. Remember you can see the show if you subscribe to it on my Karen Campbell YouTube channel. And I wish you'd tell your friends about that too. And you can read the blog on my website, starborninstitute.org, and it will explain a little bit more about the theme of the show every week. And until then, I'll see you next week. Thanks a lot. Bye.